What's up, y'all? I'm Lady, and today I am here with a book talk. Today I want to discuss The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. This is my first book by Lisa C, but I was not disappointed at all. I looked her up on Goodreads, and she has written a lot of books and has a pretty big following. Um, a lot of the books that she's written have high star ratings as well, so I may check out some of her other things. We'll see, you know, who knows what the future holds, but I will say that I was not disappointed with this one. So I read this book over the course of four days. It's just over about 360, 370 pages, and I read it and listened to the audiobook. And I'm glad I had the audiobook available because it helped me with some pronunciation uh, issues that I had when I was reading this book with, you know, some of the characters' names and uh, some of the, uh, sometimes the dialogue was in, you know, their language. So um, I'm glad I had the audio book to help with that. So overall, I gave this book five stars. I really enjoyed it. I do realize there are some things that could maybe take it down to like a four. Um, especially I feel like so, like around the middle part, it got a little boring. I feel like some things could have been cut out. Um, the feel of the story also changed in the book. I was really, really enjoying the first part of it. The middle kind of slow, and then the ending I did enjoy. So I realized it could be more like a four point, yeah, four or three point seven five. But overall, I gave it a five star because of the way the story made me feel. I really grew to love this main character, um, which her name is Leanne, and I really grew to love her mother. So whenever I fall in love with characters, even though I may have some issues with writing and everything like that, I still will just go ahead and give the book a high rating. So... I will always think about this book when drinking tea, right? Because you see the tea girl of Hummingbird Lane. And this story is about Leanne. She grew up in a remote mountain village in China. And she's a part of the Aka people who pretty much live their lives the way they've lived their lives for generations. Um, they live in the mountains in China, and the majority of their income comes from selling tea grown in those mountains. And the village is poor until the demand for old tea called poor increases. So in the beginning, we j just are going along day-to-day -day life with the main character, Leanne. She is bound by all of her family's traditions and superstitions, which, oh, this culture, they have a lot of them. Um, to her family, she's just referred to as a girl. I mean, I feel like her family loves her, but because she's a girl, she's not valued at all in their culture. In fact, every woman that's pregnant um, in this story wishes for a boy, a boy, a boy. That's all they want. So there's no value in being a woman in this culture. Um, however, she is allowed to be educated, which changes her outlook on life. And then she becomes pregnant out of wedlock at a young age. And tradition tells her the baby should be killed, but instead she leaves her baby at an orphanage. And so that's where the story goes from there. Her daughter is adopted by a white American couple and grows up in California. And then that's when the story breaks off into kind of like two parts where we're still following Leanne and what her 
um, journey is. But then we start getting glimpses of her daughter's life being a Chinese child adopted from an orphanage by a um, white couple really shapes a lot for her. And so I enjoyed that aspect of it. That's something that I never really thought about. Um, but I do remember like news articles and talking about that at a time when, you know, China had the one child rule. Um, and so that caused for a lot of abortions or a lot of children to be abandoned and things like that. Also, their soup, their traditions and superstitions, you know, they, they reject twins or they reject any child born with any type of birth defects. And so that caused as well a lot of children to be, you know, orphaned in this time, okay? So that brought out a very interesting aspect, which I will also say I feel like the author, she definitely took her time with researching tea and the price of tea and how you know it grew in popularity so much so to some some parts of it i was like okay now this isn't a textbook is it i'm reading a novel right i i mean she gave a lot of references a lot of information about the tea industry so i appreciate it some of it was a little bit too much information i feel but overall i appreciated it um, so I will say um, that there was some drama in this book, especially around close to the end part, which I feel made it pick back up. Um, this story definitely talked about family traditions, friendships, and that's where that drama came from, uh, in it. So that was interesting. But those family traditions of favoring a boy over a girl or, you know, the things that, you know, you had to do um, so you wouldn't get rejected from their society. It, that was a big deal. Um, the effects of modernization on this rural area. So when this tea became popular, then the um, village that she lived in um, started to earn money and things changed. And so that was very interesting. Um, the governmental policies regarding the one child also, her people, um, the main character, Leanne, her people are the Aka people, but they were mostly just categorized as one of the major cultures in China because they were so rural and many thought they were, well, not thought they weren't educated. Many were not educated and all they knew was, you know, the mountain living. So... That is that was very interesting to read about. Overall, I highly recommend The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane. I feel that you will not be disappointed. I will say that even though I like the audiobook for um to help with pronunciation, I will say that when it switches off and breaks off to her daughter's story and she's a teenager i did not like the way the narrator started <laughs> changed the voice or whatever of it but overall i highly recommend this one um by the time i got to the end like i said i loved the characters and i i just wanted to hug the book i i absolutely love how it ended i felt that it was a great ending and you just won't be disappointed so this was the first book i finished in april of this year and this next book i read was like water for chocolate so stay tuned to my for my next video where i will discuss like water for chocolate and that's it for me in this one i'm lady i will see you all in my next video bye y'all